the Madman. One of the top cards of Custom Hearthstone of the week. Let's start off with a doozy of a card. Mage Legendary 10 mana 5-5. Five five. It's Chromie Timeline Mender. Battlecry, summon your spell damage minions that died this game. Cast Arcane Explosion. Essentially meaning if you build a deck around it, you're gonna summon a few to a bunch of minions, and then you'll clear the opponent's board. Design, five stars. Balance, five stars, asterisk. A lot like Nazoth, it has the extra flair of casting Arcane Explosion, which I think is a really cool design. So how could I give this a balance of five when Nazoth just summons death rattle minions and doesn't clear the opponent's board? Well, it's a class only card and it requires you to build your deck in a very different way that's currently not being done at all. A lot of decks have answers to this. Sure, they won't have a board to deal with your minions, but perhaps, you know, some sort of AoE, like, yes, against decks that are tempo decks, this ends the game pretty much because they don't have an answer to a wide board. If you don't have an AoE clear, Chromie ends the game. So for that reason, it's high alert danger. There are metas in which the balance would be fine on this card. I'm hesitant because there's no counterplay if you are a board deck. Like against Nazoth, if you had a board, Nazoth like creates a board, but maybe you can still kill off the Nazoth stuff. With Chromie, your stuff is just dead with Arcane Explosion. At the end of the day, the Nazoth's minions that they summon are on average far better, and they stick around. And it was neutral, and it wasn't that big a problem. So I think I can give Chromie a pass even though casting, you know, basically Flame Strike alongside of the Nazoth effect is huge. Hulk trolled in! 5 mana 5-5 five, five, Paladin. Battle cry, choose a friendly minion, return it to your hand, and give it plus four, plus four, and rush. Design, five stars. Balance, three stars. This card has the Rastakhan's Rumble uh, set insignia on it, so it's intended to be alongside that set. So I can evaluate it around that. Very troll flavored and very Gurubashi Arena flavored. I like the reference. It's like tag teaming a guy out. The card I'm going to compare this with is Bog Slosher. Bog Slosher is a card that looked like it was pushing power levels already. So this has a similar stat line as Bog Slosher and gives another plus two plus two and it gives a rush. And... I think Bog Slosher is actually a little bit scary. The only reason it isn't being played is it's in Shaman. Probably would see play in other classes. Now Hulk trolled in is scary. I do think this fits the Paladin theme well. It's hand buff. But yeah, it's just a bit too overstated. So for something like this, I think the effect is cool. Uh, it just needs to be nerfed by one mana, I'd say. So my proposal is that it should simply be six mana. Rush is a really powerful ability. Uh, and while returning things to your hand is slow, and while hand buffing is slow, giving things rush is really fast. Fallen Guardian, 4 mana 4-4 four, four, Priest Minion. Battle Cry, restore 4 health. If your hero is in shadow form, deal 4 damage instead. Design, 5 stars. Balance, 5 stars. Though I will say that this could probably legitimately go up to a 4 mana 4-5. Four, so there was a 4 mana 4-4 four, four that restored 4 in the past. Troom Brewer. That was a card that saw play in some decks, uh, especially control decks, especially Warlock, which didn't have access to much healing. Uh, so 4 mana, 4, 4, restore 4 the bonus for Priest, that's absolutely fine. I like the dual purpose of this card a lot, in that it's both restore 4 health, uh, and it can be played uh, later on to deal 4 damage when you're in shadow form. And this would presumably come alongside other cards in which being in Shadow Form mattered. I think there's some room to be explored with a Priest in Shadow Form. And yeah, certainly a 4 mana 4 5 would be pushing the power level of the card a lot. And then perhaps you pull back the Restore Health to 3 Health and then the Damage to 3 Damage, something like that. But I'm not too against, like, pushing Flask cards, especially Priests, especially minion-based priest cards. Snowstorm! Mage, spell, 5 mana, freeze all minions, summon a 4-5 chill when yeti. Design, 5 stars, balance, 3 stars. And I was a little bit hesitant to give the design 5 stars, but I do feel like it captures the essence of a snowstorm so well. But warnings have to be given about how 
there's such a thing as a critical mass of freeze, uh, AoE freeze, between Frost Nova, Blizzard, and Snowstorm. In fact, this seems like the type of card which might warrant one of those cards to be put into the Hall of Fame. So that all being said, I think this card is really cool flavor. Uh, it does say freeze all minions, so your own side is hit. I think it at 6 would be a complement to Blizzard in power level, because freeze all minions uh, is kind of similar to the freeze effect of Blizzard, and then Blizzard comes with a consecration effect. This comes with a Yeti. A Yeti and a consecration effect are both valued at 4 mana. So I do think this card is too powerful at 5 mana. But it is interesting to see cards like this and think, yeah, the fact that Frost Nova and Blizzard are both in the core set actually is a limit on design of AoE Freeze, isn't it? Streetwise Scumbag. Shaman 3 mana 3 4. Battlecry, give a random card in your opponent's deck. Overload 1. Secretly. Design, 4 stars. Balance, 5 stars. I actually really like the idea of this card, and it pained me to give it a design of 4, but it's just because I really did not like the secretly part of the card, and that's like a big part of the card. Your opponent shouldn't just randomly overload for 1 somewhere in a random time. I think it should simply print the card onto, print the overload onto the card itself. What pains me on this card is that without the secretly, even with the secretly, this card wouldn't be strong enough to play in Constructed. So the big designer puzzle, which I'm going to pose to you guys, is how do you make this card stronger without overpowering it? You could do something boring like make it a 3 mana 4-4. Four, four. Uh, the problem right here is give a random card in your opponent's deck overload 1 is basically a nothing burger. Uh, you don't have no idea when they're going to draw it, and then when they draw it, they don't have to play it immediately, and when they play it, all they do is get penalized by an overload of one, when it's probably going to be in the late game. So basically, this is kind of like a vanilla minion. So yes, you could make it a 3-mana 4-4, four, four, and yes, a 3-mana 4-4 four, four shaman class card would probably be fine. How do you make it not overpowered? And I thought about, give a random card in your opponent's hand overload one, and that actually seemed a bit overpowered, because... A card in your opponent's hand is probably something that they want to play relatively soon. If they do play it, then this ends up actually getting a discount of 1 mana, it's like a 2 mana 3-4 then. So that's too overpowered. Someone gave the cool idea of give the top card of the opponent's deck overload 1, and that was an interesting balance, but still probably too overpowered because that's a card that's going to enter the opponent's hand relatively soon, so it's kind of like uh, give a random card in your opponent's hand overload 1. So the trick is how do you make a interesting but fairly innocuous card text uh, matter and have it be played? And when I think about it, this is a similar type of thing that Blizzard did do to many 3-mana three 3-4s three like Drakari Trickster. An ability that is a nothing burger is being put onto a 3-mana three 3-4. Three Feels a bit of a shame to put something so cool onto a 3 mana 3 4 though and not have it see play. Unstable Amalgam. 8 mana 4 4 death rattle, add a random minion of each tribe to your hand, and as is all amalgams, it is an all tribe. Design, 3 stars, balance, 3 stars. So there are a total of 8 tribes in the game, which means the death rattle is adding 8 uh, cards into your hand, which is big. That said, I was actually okay with the idea of an 8 mana 4-4 four, four with death rattle add 8 cards into your hand, one of each tribe. That's fine, but there is a problem with this, uh, which I think is a major design flaw. There are two major design flaws. Three major design flaws, actually. So first of all, the Amalgam, Unstable Amalgam, as printed, can get itself because all Amalgams are all tribes, so each Amalgam always has a chance of getting added to your hand. Amalgam infinite value could be real. That's kind of insane. Uh, secondly, the all tag is problematic for Amalgam because there are a number of tribes out there that can cheat out Unstable Amalgam. And that's a problem because some tribes are built around the idea that they only have low-cost cards, such as Murloc, such as Scargill, uh, plus Unstable Amalgam being insane, such as Pirates, uh, such as Captain Hooktusk recruiting Unstable Amalgam potentially being insane. 
Also, boy would this be an insane card to get out of Mech Warrior, huh? Sometimes you just discover Unstable Amalgam. <laughs> so I feel like the all tag out of Unstable Amalgam needs to be removed, and therefore the card needs to be uh, redesigned to not be an Amalgam. And also, this is kind of a legendary type effect, so it should be a legendary card. So with a different reflavor of that, I think it's fine. I think the stat line at an 8-mana 4-4 four, four is fine. The main problem, which would be uh, balance and being out of whack with balance, is the fact that this is an all. So simply removing the all fixes a lot of the problems. Library Custodian. 3 mana, 3, 7. Can't attack. Your hero power is silence a minion. Cool idea. Design 5 stars. Balance 3 stars. Sure, the baseline of this card is a 5 mana, 3, 7. Without text, pretty much. And 5 mana, 3, 7 without text. That's perfectly fine. It's on the weak side. So obviously you're hoping to use the ability uh, silence a minion on something first. Play it, you silence an opponent's minion and then you still have a 3 mana 3 7 can't attack on the next turn, maybe you silence the custodian. And it's at this point where we compare this with Owl and be like, wait, this is so much better. Yes, this is a 5 mana Owl, but it comes with a 3 7. And if you're actually using it as something that can fight, then I guess it's closer to a 7 mana 3 7, but because of the payment plan of the hero power, like this is far better. Notable, when you silence the library custodian, your hero power goes back to normal but that does mean you can then reuse your hero power. In short, this card is too powerful for the stats. Just consider the fact that the Owl is a three mana two one, and this has so many interesting uses. Your opponent's gonna have to deal with this card if they have a deck that's vulnerable to silence. I think that this uh, stat line should be nerfed quite a bit. Perhaps two, three, four? Three, five, I feel like would be pushing it even. Too much health for the opponent to remove and uh, repeatable silence is a bit abusive, so it should be on a card that can actually be removed by the opponent. We have a cute Pepe! 1 mana, 0, 4, battle cry, choose to gain rush, wind fury, or poisonous. Uh, 1 mana, 0, 4, beast. So cute! Design 5 stars, balance 5 stars. It's a card that, if you put it to work with something else, could be good, and alone is completely pointless. I like it. It's got a beast, so you could play Houndmaster with a rushed Pepe. You could simply have it sit on the board with Wind Fury and maybe your opponent is too scared and has to remove it because otherwise you inner fire it or you buff it or something like that. It's got a cute bag of tricks. Also iconic in the World of Warcraft universe. Next we have a set of cards introducing a textless mechanic. Uh, and I won't cover all the cards and I won't even cover textless in such great detail, but I want to give my quick two cents on this particular mechanic idea and any mechanics that refer to out-of-game elements, I'm going to say. Textless is almost kind of a fourth wall breaker. It's out of the game, it refers to an ability that's not on cards. It just takes you away from the card-slinging universe of Hearthstone. I kind of refer to my similar hatred for cards that reference the history bar, for example. It's just not really part of the game. There are mechanics out there which are gonna feel bad because they simply are too out of bounds, I'm going to say, of the world of Hearthstone. And I feel like Textless is one of them. And finally, let's go to Lei Shen, Thunder King. It's an 8-mana 4-8 legendary for Shaman. A taunt, battle cry, replace cards in your hand with ones that cost two more. They cost two less. Design, three stars. Balance, two stars. Why is this useful? Well, sometimes you're left with cards that aren't useful for the situation, such as you're playing Control Shaman, such as you have Hagatha and you generate a bunch of random spells that are useless. So you can play Lei Shen to replace them with cards that might be useful. Spells can become minions, minions can become spells. Kind of interesting. Uh, the main problem I have with this is I compare it to Rafam from Warlock. Rafam is a lot better as a 7 mana 7 8 that not only replaces your hand but also your deck. It doesn't give you the discount on cards, but here's my main problem with the design. Uh, when you're this late game, you don't really care about the mana savings too much about cards. So, replacing cards in your hand that cost two more than they cost two less, like the discount's nice, but relatively unimportant. And also the fact that it doesn't hit your deck, like that's both a pro and a con, but with Lei Shen, you would be needing specifically a hand of cards which you don't need. And yes, that happens with Hagatha, 
sometimes, but uh, it's not really a great idea to print this card just to complement Hagatha when Hagatha is going to rotate out at some point and then Lei Shen will be useless. And I consider that bad design also if it's only going to work with like a specific card that's in the meta now. Essentially, it's got the problem that cards in your hand probably are going to be more useful than cards in your hand that get replaced, especially if you're playing a Control Shaman deck. Uh, and would you play this as a finisher in an aggro shaman? Absolutely not, unlike Rafam, because it doesn't hit your deck. Uh, Rafam is a last ditch effort. Lei Shen, though, is completely useless. And I just don't really see much design space for this. So there you have it. Interesting cards. Uh, I'm starting to give the balance on cards like a little bit more of a leeway, I'd say, because there is room for cards to be like plus or minus one health often, but often there isn't also. Romy is an example of a balance five card, which like I'm really afraid to give a balance of five, but I'm like, I think if I say asterisk, it's okay. It would have to be tested a lot and it would have to be in the right meta, but could be a really cool card.